Okay, good morning, everybody. Welcome. No brush required, episode 69. I'm going to grab Barbara Reed and uh, we'll get going in just a second. My name's Tamara Grand. Welcome back. Here she comes. It Howdy. <laughs> Howdy. Howdy. <laughs> Howdy indeed. Long time no see. Yeah, when was the last time? We I did? don't remember. <laughs> it was another month, a different month. <laughs> it was like even two months ago. No. Oh, well, we were on in August. Yes, we were. We talked to Nadine. You are correct. Hi, Rena. How are you? I'm just amazed because I can. Am I, I too can, dark here? I can hear you. You kind of dark. Hi, Douglas. Hang on. I got my lights way up because it's actually raining in Vancouver today. Hang on. Oh, she's so, getting brighter. Am there I bright? Is. Am I you're, bright enough? You're brighter. <laughs> oh, are we rusty? We're a little rusty. <laughs> Rusty. This is as bright as I can get. Okay. I can't get any brighter. Okay. That's okay because your megawatt smile and personality will just like brighten the whole broadcast. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so it's my fault we haven't been on. It's because of the noise that was was going on here. But it is silent. It is it's been like quiet. They're here. The guys are here. The construction crew is around, but they haven't been jackhammering. So. Oh, that's so good. Is your sanity returned? Because i that's a form of torture, nonstop It was noise. awful. It was awful. I, we were lucky we had a place we could go hang out during the day. Um, but it was when we were here, yeah. it was like teeth gritting. I couldn't paint. I couldn't, I couldn't do anything. It just my sanity was on the edge. Poor so. Rena said she's still hobbling around with her boot. and But she's painting, which is great. Hi, Charlotte. Nice to see you. Nice to meet you. Mm -hmm. We have lots of, lots of people that um, it looks like they might be new to us, or it's just been so long or since we've been on. <laughs> we can't remember anything. <laughs> well, those of you who are new here, welcome. This is no brush required. It is a, it's supposed to be a weekly chat with myself, Tamara Grand, and Barbara Reed. We're both Canadian artists, and uh, we started chatting early on during the pandemic and just kind of never stopped hmm. and we left and we're in two different parts of canada you're in british columbia and yeah. i'm in ontario yes. so we are three hours apart we are so i say good morning and barbara says good afternoon, good afternoon. I go, it's and not it, morning it's <laughs> afternoon. And, if and if you're watching on the replay it's whatever time you're watching whatever yeah it's whatever yeah. you got your bubbly or your Oh, I'm drinking. Choice. Can you not tell? I'm cold. I've got my tea today. It's only 14 degrees out here. That's cold. That is cold. It, it's uh, it's pretty. It's early 20s. It's absolutely gorgeous day out. It's going to be like this all week. Excellent. I love it. Uh, yeah, I know. We need the rain though. We've had two days of rain all summer out here. You guys should do a show together. Oh, you mean like an art show or oh. like this kind of show? You mean like <laughs> like something like no brush required? I think she I think Danielle means an art show. I, I actually have an idea about that. I, I threw an idea at you and so if it comes to fruition we'll let you all know. It's I like, logistically I like, challenging. I like the concept. You like the research. I like, I like the research. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think it's a go. Yeah, I, think I think it's a go. It's a go. We'll let you guys know we do have an idea. Um before we grab today's guest and pop her on i just want to do a quick oh 14 degrees in america speak um oh 65 is it that fahrenheit that cold 70 70 fahrenheit 70 no maybe. colder i think 20s of, isn't 20 about 70 i don't know clearly we are not um, <laughs> bilingual when it comes to temperature we it's are cold memorized. enough that I am in a fleece lined funnel necked hoodie today. Okay, that's how cold I am. That's chilly. It is chilly. I'm in a t shirt. Yeah. Woohoo, look at those muscles. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Next week, everybody remember we do this thing called No Brush Required Reads about every eight weeks. We have a book, it's a virtual art book, book club. And um, this 
time around, we're reading something called The Art Thief. Can you, I can't read it backwards. A true story of love, crime, and I don't know, dangerous obsession yeah. anyways yeah. by an author named michael finkel i'll pin it to the top of my feed this week so that you guys can see if you've read it and you want to join in and chat about it next week barb and i will have read it i have finished it um, i'm almost done i have finished and uh, anybody who wants to pop on and chat either in the messages or come on live with us is welcome to and you know what if you don't read the book you can always just google mm -hmm. goodreads what's it about or um look for a review online if you're interested and come and have a chat with us anyways mm -hmm. we, we're not the kind of book club that you know has a test or looks down our nose at you if you don't actually read the book <laughs> no god no i've been in enough book clubs where i am one of those people who hasn't read the book and sometimes i'll start the book and go no i don't like this book and life is too short to read bad books so yeah, yeah we're 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 not uh, remotely uh, rule following Perfect. when it comes to this. Douglas, cliff notes are absolutely fine. I do recommend it because I'm, I'm fascinated by this. Mm -hmm. um, Me too. I've been, I've been watching this show, No Only Murders in the Building, and so I've been really turned on to true crime lately. I think it's really interesting the things that people do. And, like, this is a true story, and the guy in it gets away with a lot like it's it's amazing i'm never going to be able to go into an art gallery or art museum, art museum. Um, and look at things quite the same way again so i know and it, you'd be looking for potential yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what can i fit in my nap no, <laughs> no are you kidding no. don't you remember we we uh last year when we were in new york didn't we get like a couple of security guys like rushing out because we were standing too close to paintings yeah, yeah. one of us is particular one of us? Yeah. No, it was, it was you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was. I remember. I think I had my hands behind my back. You did. Okay. Okay. All right. Guilty All right. Pet All right. Let me grab our guest today and oh. um, the slip. All right. I'll pull her on. And you know what? Don't start talking until she's on because I have discovered when I watch the playbacks, as I'm sending the invites, when I go want, 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 want. You can't hear me because something's happening when we're inviting someone. Oh, so I can't say anything. Well, you can either say something now and introduce her before I bring oh, okay. her on. <laughs> <laughs> Got the pressures on. Okay, we are welcoming Debbie Dicker, who is a San Francisco-based artist and sculptor, mm -hmm. and I believe a photographer. I was in her website recently, and she's yeah. got some beautiful photographs. A former art teacher, but she i believe she also teaches workshops yeah. and scuba diver yeah All yeah right, very cool fit it up so you can do okay. your magic presto here she comes here she comes there she <laughs> is. hey debbie <laughs> hi debbie welcome hi hey this how very are nice you to meet you here yes. i am good can you hear me yeah you can okay good I am great. Good. I'm excited about our conversation. We are too. I've been looking. I've been down the rabbit hole looking at all of your art mm. and and reading about what you've been up to. And I'm fascinated by the. I'm fascinated by the scuba and the coral and mm -hmm. you know the being influenced by the ocean. You live in where in California? I I actually am in Marin County, oh. right oh. out San Francisco. Okay. Yeah. So we're we're on the same ocean. Yes. We same time zone the same ocean yeah yeah yes. um, you guys are you guys are. Yeah. sorry mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, always kind of happens look. debbie i always feel like i'm just somewhere else <laughs> well I'm, an, I'm originally an east coast person so huh? i'm kind of the coast person right so, up in new york city you grew oh, up well, let's start new there yeah. tell us about that yeah. yeah oh actually it was a fabulous place to grow up and I went to the High School of Art and Design. So, you know, they have specialized art high schools there, public art high schools. So I've been on the artist track for a while. Yeah. And, um, and then went to state colleges. I went to many mm -hmm. um, for art and got my teaching credential actually in Portland. And then I came to the Bay Area and I went to C uh, California College of the Arts for graphic design. But um, yeah, and I've been here. And so I retired about five years ago. Me too. 
Yeah, full time. I know. That's our con well, we have a few connections. Yeah. I think, you know, there's a few things because mm -hmm. I see. That did you both study with Nicholas Wilton? I did. I haven't uh, did. taken CVP, but I've been an accolade for years. Might as well have. <laughs> yeah. Right? yeah. Like through osmosis. Yeah. So um, I took one of his workshops. But then are we on Jen Tuff's um, membership? I've Either been in her free yeah. group. Yes. Yeah, me, Not me too. Me. Okay. Yeah. Well, the free group. Mm -hmm. So, but, um, anyway, I was one of the founding. And it, but what I want to talk to you about is the residency I just yeah. got. That's the most exciting thing. And then I can back up from there. You know, like sure. how it impacts me. You know, mm -hmm. as an artist. Um, oh, I'll, I'll just say that retiring five years ago, I it was my time. Mm -hmm. You know, to finally focus on. Because I always did art. I taught art. That's what I did full time. But um, first through eighth grade. So at an independent school. So um, is that the same? Well, I was at an independent school. I don't know if the American definition uh -huh. of independent school is the same. But like we have private schools, public schools, independent schools. They're not for profit. Right. Same uh, yeah. thing. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Similar. Right. Mm -hmm. so, um, so I finished up that and you know throughout my time my adulthood I had very fragmented things with my art you know mm -hmm. I might be in a group show or I'd have a, a, a solo show in like my eyeglass place in San Francisco or you know and I'd be in galleries and group shows but um but so this was my time mm -hmm. and working at it trying to figure out you know developing a body of work and getting out there and I just just decided about well it was before COVID it was in 2019 to apply to this residency because uh -huh. I someone someone I knew went to it and she couldn't rave enough about it so I thought okay I'm gonna just apply and see what happens so I got in in 2019 but then COVID hit so I didn't get to go till now based on my schedule their schedules and there were about four of us there that were still making up for okay. COVID. The rest of the people there were newbies that, you know, they, they had just applied, right. you know, whatever the year application process is. But anyway, it was amazing. It was dreamy. It was a dream come true for me. Um, I loved it more than work, going to a workshop. It's okay, weird. well, you have to back up and you have yeah. to tell everybody where it was oh, okay. because right. the locale right. is and really the selling point, okay. too. So the name of it is, the residency was at Chateau Orcavo, mm -hmm. and it's in the town of Orcavo. And, um, and I actually think, I'm pretty sure they just opened the application for 2024-25, right. something like that. So, and this is the country of France for those yes, people who you. weren't aware that Orcavo <laughs> is French. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank it's on the ball. It's it's on the ball. I'm not so much. <laughs> Got the information. Yeah. But um, yeah, and it's beautiful French countryside in the Champagne, Champagne region of France. So you actually fly into Paris and then get on a train, a regional train, unless you're renting a car. I got on a regional train and it's about two hours away. Mm. And the train and then take you to this beautiful chateau, like so gorgeous. It's like a dream come true for everybody. Um, we all get different bedrooms. You get your own private bedroom. You all get studios, your own private studio. Um, different, you know, different sizes, different configurations, um, and, you know, you make it work. Mm -hmm. And then uh, three meals. It's just salons. Just if you go onto my website, um, my mm -hmm. Instagram, you'll see, you know, pictures of, of it. But um, it was lovely. And then you have the artist to be with because I work in my home. I have a studio sitting in and I'm isolated. Mm -hmm. So it's really perfect to have that. And, you know, there are buildings here, like I could join an art community and have a studio, but I'm traveling too much. So basically I'm living the dream of traveling and doing 
art. And so, and scuba diving plays into that. Yeah. But um, so anyway, back to the residency, uh, what I found different than workshops, because I was just exploring like, why was this so good for me? And one, you're not guided by anyone, mm -hmm. you know, you're not. And so what that allows you to do, and what that allows you to do is just explore and you, you come up with your own plan and um, work that you want to do. You bring some supplies. They do have supplies. They will take you. They do a supply run. But I had enough with me that I didn't have to do that because I didn't want to waste any time. I wanted to get right in there and start working. And, um, and so you just get to develop and go in any direction you need to um, with some feedback of the mm -hmm. artists around you. If, and, and you can regulate that, you know, like you can get a good amount of it if you want or hardly at all. Mm -hmm. You know, have the, you just close that door, you know, and just and open it. And then um, I did become close to one or two, you know, I mean, everybody's mm -hmm. right, you know, mm -hmm. everybody everybody's friendly, but then I did get closer to one or two people so we could go knocking on each other's door. Am I finished with this? <laughs> or you need a line there, or you need yeah. more color over there, or it needs to go a little darker. No, it's not quite there yet, yeah. or stop, don't touch yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, yeah, you know, one. that was really fun, and it was really fun to the thing that happens at a workshop, even though everybody does their own expression, it's still so influenced by the teacher. Mm -hmm. and, and I don't want that anymore. I realize doing this, I get to really delve deeper into what I need to be doing. I need to develop my own signature, my own style, my own work, and um, build my confidence based on my own judgments and, um, you know, and taking in people's feedback and letting some go and, right. you know, and just really getting more confident. It, it allowed, it made me more confident in just doing something like that, um, putting myself out there in that kind of environment and, um, and being supported too. Right. But he's so wonderfully supportive um and there's there's all types of artists there's um there were two writers mm -hmm. and they were incredible they had books out one was a poet and one was a novelist did they read to you did you yep. hear did you get to hear some of their work yeah so we have like there was um a writing salon there was a a right um a lit a literature night where anybody could bring something to share but they shared much more so mm -hmm. um, and then we had an open studio at the end that started with the writers and the one musician that was there oh. he was nice. he collected sounds he was like he was he studied and um sort of follows in the footsteps of Brian Eno. Mm -hmm. So it was soundtracks and taking um, sounds he found around the place and then what he did with them. And at the end did this presentation for us. So it was really like a lot of different types of art forms. Mm -hmm. um, and then the visual artists were all different. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know, everything from encaustic to, um, there was a a costume designer because she does live sculpture that she so she was creating some new costumes um and then she did some uh collage work mm -hmm. and then um there were people who were like plain air artists that did some magnificent things um and you know just it was all over the map there were people who just painted in their studio we were all influenced by um I don't know if everybody was, but that environment. Yeah. So you'll, yeah. I you'll have to see. I actually did some abstract landscapes. I haven't yeah, like really. Yeah. Well, but you must have been far from. You weren't close to the ocean, no. right? No. No. So I had this, you know, these. There was a big pond that you could swim in because it was hot, and oh, and then they had life drawing, and so they had a nude model session, and then she also did. Um, where people went out with her 
I didn't know they were doing this, but I wanted to get back to my studio after life drawing. But she went into the water and did some poses. Um, for wow. people. Yeah, yeah. That so that's amazing. Yeah, and then so exciting. How long were you there? Like, how long was this this um, adventure of yours? I was there for two weeks. They have two weeks and four weeks sessions, and I was told I I did a lot of work. I cranked out a lot, a lot of work, and I was told that um, that you know I did a lot. And that maybe I did as much as somebody who had gone for, would have gone for four weeks because they're more relaxed in the four week yeah. session, you know, yeah. where they'll go hiking more and relax more. Yeah. You know? And so I felt like I did some hiking, but not as much as I maybe would have. I don't know. Mm -hmm. It sounds um, like you wanted to make the most of your studio time when you were there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I did. Yes. And especially because I'm traveling, I feel like. So it was so great. As much as there was interaction, you know, like eating and those workshops, they had a writer's workshop for us. You could put on your artist statement or there were a lot of people working on some like script writing and other mm -hmm. things they were doing, but um, the visual artists, but uh, it's still, you don't have the, the, the home stuff. You're not cleaning mm -hmm. up. You're not cooking meals, right? Um, you know, just so you have no distractions, no domestic distractions. Right. So you can do so much more. Mm -hmm. So that was lovely, and um, yeah. And so they're gonna do a three-week workshop, I think, coming up, and that might be the winner. Like if I consider going back, mm -hmm. I think that's what I would do. Yeah. I would. Did you find that things shifted with the way that you work while you were there? Yes. I felt like, because I was concentrating so much, and I was taking a body of work that I had kind of started here at home um, and taking it further, I figured out sort of a strategy mm -hmm. on, like, how to approach it, like, where I should start, mm -hmm. like, every time. Like, I could maybe deviate, but... Um, so I, and that strategy helped me sort of get, get to it faster. Mm -hmm. You know, it didn't mean I would resolve the piece. Sometimes I did, I resolved it very quickly and then sometimes mm -hmm. I didn't, but it still gave me, I figured out a process, which was mm -hmm. new because right. every time I start a painting, it was new, you know, like in my studio and maybe I do it differently. And, um, and this was, I, even though I did like a few different approaches of, in terms of bodies of work that I was doing, I did some work on paper and I added collage and that I still started in the same place with these lines on the cam. Mm -hmm. for, and then, um, and then I added some black and then just, you know, just, and then, I, yeah. you know, and I just kind of, came up with a system now that of course you know maybe you know i'll do three more paintings and it'll get thrown out <laughs> yeah, but, but, you know, but i hear you because um we do tend to start things the same way mm -hmm. uh and you try like you know if you're at a workshop you can see what the instructor's doing and you give it a go and it's like eh, it's not really for me or maybe it is for you but no i hear you and i i find for myself sometimes it's like am i wasting time just kind of eventually working my way into a piece or is there a quicker entry point right 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 so that's pretty neat and then one of the things i have to say i guess if you were in a big building with artists depending on what that was about but for me there, you know, we shared and peeked into each other's studios. And even if you didn't realize it, there was influence by like an approach or a layering or mm -hmm. um, how they were using medium or not using medium and getting acrylic to look like oils. And, you know, just, um, you know, things like that, that mm, was fun, you know, okay. to, yeah. You didn't find it distracting? I mean, I always find there's that slippery slope between wanting to be wanting to see what other people are doing and, and getting some outside influences into your work, but also then the subconscious, you know, inclusion of things that aren't necessarily you. And it's sometimes it's really hard. It's a melting pot, right? Like you don't know where it all comes from. But um, 
I'm always just curious how other people feel about that. Well, it, it was interesting. I, I don't think I had, I, I don't think anybody did influence my work mm -hmm. um, that way. Mm -hmm. uh, the only one, and I, I mentioned that the only one, there was a, a beautiful um, abstract landscape mm -hmm. artist and she was the one, she was using Acrylics. I use a lot of medium and she was using acrylic without medium um, and actually without water and so very thickly painted right. um, and her abstracts were um, you could tell you know that it was a landscape with trees or you know hills and just the way she blended her colors and didn't blend um that was what it was great for me to see that mm -hmm. like she really was successful in making it look like oils so right. without using them. so right. but she doesn't have the transparency like some of the stuff i get because i'm like the glazes and the, the layers and the right. veiling okay right. i gotta ask you because i'm packing stresses me out and i'm just talking clothing what the heck did you take how did you get how did you get everything from the u.s into europe i had my my um, palette knife confiscated at the airport when i flew to uh, uh new york from toronto so how, what oh, the heck did you pack oh, oh well wow. okay so because i did have i had a palette knife but maybe it wasn't that sharp but yeah because well i checked my bag yeah I checked my bag. So I had a carry on because that train ride, I thought, oh, yeah. you know, lifting it up yeah. and onto like the places to put it and load it. So I had to carry on a very heavy backpack, a bigger backpack than I normally would carry. That wasn't that much fun. And then I bought a tube. Um, I think there's a picture of me. Well, I did a story, but I think. I should post it. Um, I'm trying to see if it's up here to show you. But then I bought a tube, like on Amazon, mm -hmm. that that could handle, like, go up to 40 inches. Okay. So in there, I had rolled up canvas, primed canvas, and paper. And so I had that. Um, and then in my, so in my suitcase, now I went when it was warmer, too. Like, yeah. August, so that was good. Mm -hmm. um, basically, I went with hardly anything. I had mm -hmm. two painted. I, I bought these funky overalls mm -hmm. that I could paint in, and a pair of shorts because it was hot. Mm -hmm. And then, like one T-shirt and a tank top. You know, mm -hmm. like it. Oh, and then I brought these plastic aprons instead of even taking up room with a cloth apron since right. I'm carry on. And so then, so in my carry on, I had acrylic paint. Like, like, okay. Like, like tubes of paint. Um, I had tubes. Okay. So I had a big tube of white, no, no jars. Okay. I didn't have any. So I had a big, big tube of white, um, you know, but bigger than this, you know, like this is oh, like the, yeah, this is the brown size, size. the next big size yeah. for white, like the, big. Yeah, yeah, the bigger one yeah. for white. And I had small for black. And then I had a bunch of colors that I thought, then I bought like um, a kit like that had like, I don't know, like 14 colors of these little guys, right. you know, golden, but I found I was only using like certain colors yeah. and I okay, mix them. So I had all those. Um, and then fortunately there was a uh, art closet where everybody leaves their extras. So I went down into the art closet. It wasn't golden paint, you know, it was like, you know, not as wonderful, but it still worked fine. Sure. I found like three, four, five, maybe six colors of big tubes that, were left there. Um, if I would have known, I would have done a, if they didn't have that, they, they do take you on an art run to right. store. Um, it's not a super duper store. So, okay, so back to what I carried. So I had brushes. Mm -hmm. Like, did you, did you, like big brushes, small um, brushes, like yeah. all kinds of different? Yeah, uh, I had like, um, like 
two inch, like, like you know, the, kinds of I had like one of those, like one yeah. of that big, and then you know, then down in size, right. mm -hmm. and, um, and then I paint a lot with sponges. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, sponges like the bulk of my painting is with sponges, so mm -hmm. I. Of, and they're just like regular, you know, yeah, like sponge dishes with, you know, that even have the scrubby on the back. Yeah, yeah. And I just I cut them in half, I cut them in quarters and thirds, and I just like wipe on the paint. And so, um, so that got me my bigger areas. Not that I have really giant areas, but that that was really. And then I used the brushes and my scraper, you know, and the palette knife, and. Um, and then oh but i mediums? did you take mediums like i did take little little i left them all but yeah. like little guys yeah. like the two you know like the little guys that you yeah. can get mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. and then fortunately there was medium there because yeah. i did what i didn't bring is enough uh gel medium because i used and so there was more there, which could have been bought too, but um, it was there. I and then taken my gallon bucket. <laughs> right. <laughs> <But I have. laughs> a little, little, and then and then fortunately there was more, and then I was like, okay, I'll glaze with water, you know. Yeah. Uh, but there was enough that I could use, and, and pencils, yeah. and ebony pencils, uh, Posca pens, because I use a lot of those. Um, and uh yeah that kind of thing um my a mark not regular markers but posca markers i brought yep. um and yeah i th think that's oh a scrapers like i had a i had like one scraper like this i had this guy you know where yeah. i could oh yeah yeah, yeah yeah um yeah and then just oh and i had i had like these these kinds of things, you know, yeah. like, you, you know, I got that. Yeah. Yeah. Like scrape with and then, you these know, these guys. Yeah. Like, like that. Oh, yeah. Oh, except I didn't bring big ones like that. No. You know, because th there was room, you know, mm -hmm. like you just, you know, so I just kind of tried to get it down to. So, but what's helped me is all my travels, which is vast, mm -hmm. um, I do, I make little, I really feel like I do residencies when I travel. Mm -hmm. Like okay. we did, I did my first boat trip. We went up to the Arctic and mm -hmm. so the weather's not always good. Plus I wanted to do the icebergs and the, mm -hmm. the, it was amazing. So I set up a little, like in my room on the little table, you yeah. know, I set up a whole area to paint and I brought acrylics. And I brought, um, which I did here too, I brought the canvas, um, like paper, yeah. Yeah. You know, the canvas that you pull out of a pad yeah. mm -hmm. that has gesso on it, and it comes in all sizes. So I brought some of that. These were, these were some paintings I did, like when I was there to figure out things. Right. Very cool. all, you know, and I, I love that stuff. And then I come home. And I mount it when I was in, when I did that, um, not these, but when I did my icebergs and my, they're on my website, my icebergs and my broken up uh, ice. Um, so they were on, on this and eight by tens. And I came home and I mounted them on cradle boards right. mm -hmm. and they look great. Yeah. yeah. And, I bet they do. You know, just like, yeah. Cause you know, they're little, so, you know, yeah. Perfect. Gives them more substance. Yeah, I was looking through your supply list. Um, you oh, were, I have to. Uh, and, and, like some really interesting white uh, sharpies or um, that you use a lot. Something like that. Some kind of white marker. Yeah. Well, I use a white when I'm in my sketchbooks, which I do a lot. When I'm in my sketchbooks, I use a white gel pen. That's it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That, yeah, I love those. I sometimes can get it to work on a flat um, acrylic, you know, but it just, it has to be really, yeah. Flat, yeah. you know, yeah. no quality. but, um, but it'll work on, you know, yeah, that doesn't, 
you know how certain mediums don't like other mediums like yeah well and then and then don't you find the nibs get the nib on that one sort of gets all clogged after a while bragging through the pain so really the best bet is the white posca pens Mm -hmm. and then you just get them in the different like the finest the middle you know and i have the whites i have in all the sizes because they're so great to use and you can get the finest one and it'll serve you you know with fine lines and um and we're getting yeah question about what ge- what brand of gel pens that you like i think it's the um pentel or something like on that order but still like that person said you know it doesn't work very well they don't you know they do get clogged yeah yeah you know, so, but they will work in my sketchbooks you know like just on watercolor they're fine um and of course on black paper they're great oh, yeah. but but really Every, the, the white china marker so, so they aren't great for me I find they they're they're okay. They're okay. I use all of it, but I I don't know. I, I, they're just they haven't been so successful for me. But there was some kind of oil pastel that was better that I used there. I took a picture of it. No, I actually think I took one. <laughs> um, yeah, and it, some brand I have to try to find because it was better than portfolio. And then better than the one Nick Wilton suggests that I have here, and I loved it. And so was um, it R and F? Was it the R and F oil it, stick? No. It, it, and it was somewhat water soluble. Okay. And, really? and but, but it was smoother. It was like just, butter. Yeah. It was. Like, it was better than portfolio. You know those. Yeah. They're really soft. And now I have not used the RNF, I used to do encaustic, but I have not used the RNF sticks to put over my acrylic. And I, I didn't, cause I didn't bring any, but I have a ton left over from my encaustic days. And I want to try doing that. Yeah. And see, yeah. Yeah. I have a whole set of my, that I was given for Christmas a couple of years ago. And that's on my mission of, to play with. Cause I just haven't figured them out yet. So I actually did go to the art supply store a couple of weeks ago after I asked on Instagram and threads, what substrate should I, what kind of paper do I need to just play with them? Uh, so I ended up coming home with some canvas prepped canvas ah. paper and some um, texture pastel paper. That was another suggestion for just using them without acrylic paint, just to explore. Right. What they might what do. Yeah. yeah. So. So, and I've watched some, um, I've been on some things, I, I didn't participate like this, but I've watched some um, good uh, videos of, um, there were two teachers from Anderson Ranch, and this one, and I asked her about it, because we could ask questions, and she used those, the RNF, on top of her acrylics. Mm-hmm with no medium, with no, um, you know, she just used it straight and soft and rubbed and, you know, blended them and beautiful. I have have a blender stick and that's supposed to actually help with drying time. Oh, Um, but my goal is to, I don't want to use them the way people use them, which is, you know, I've often seen like the big thick buttery. I do a lot of really thin layering Mm -hmm. and glazing of shapes. And that's how I want to use them to get the same effects that I get with acrylics. So it's time to play and experiment. I think you will, and I think it'll give you the the quality of surface will be nice. You know, mm-hmm. that's the difference. I think you know you you know now you can fuss with medium so much mm-hmm. that you can get amazing surfaces, but you know oil versus acrylic. Yeah. But yeah. and then cold wax. So there was, yeah, I was just reading comments here. We're yeah. getting some really good suggestions. Cold wax is wonderful. Yeah, yeah it is. Oh, oh, yeah. Okay, there you go. Oil paper with cold wax. Yes, because um, there were two artists there at the residency. One who did very traditional, um, I mean, her work wasn't traditional, but uh, the use of encaustic, hot encaustic. And then there was the artist right next door using cold wax. Mm-hmm. And, you know, because I'm not, not uh, the toxic and all the mm-hmm. stuff, mm-hmm. Like, not, you know, I'm not as interested in it anymore. Of course, I invested in all yeah. that. But, 
old wax artist, the surface mm -hmm. and the quality she was getting, and she like mixed the pigments in and everything was beautiful. Mm -hmm. Well, she was saying, but I think she used it, she used, the, and I have, over, as long as you use it over the acrylic. Right. That's what I'm and saying. I, can't go back into no. the acrylic once there's full oh. wax. Yeah. No. But yeah, as long as you use it over it, mm -hmm. you know, or not, you know, and just stay with the oil. But um, yeah, I found, it, oh, that looks so beautiful to mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, that would be good. I have finished my paintings with just cold yeah. wax. Yeah. yeah. Me too. Just, you know, and then buffing it. Yeah. Yeah. That works. That, that is gorgeous. Yeah. On acrylic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's great. So Debbie, we did have a question that you didn't see it. It came in on my question oh. sticker um, about p any pieces of work that you brought home from the residency. And I know you did bring some home. Is there anything that you can show easily? Or? Yeah. We, we yeah. like show and tell. We like show and tell. Let me see if I can. Oh, oh I was going to move this. Well, let me move out. Of I don't know if you can see. So I did these big pieces. Let's see if I can. I have you on a, a stand yep. here. Let me see get you off sorry my hands been in the way all right let's see um i don't think i can just turn this around you can you I? can and you have the two little arrows oh, that yeah. Make yeah okay here we go Great. there you go oh okay. much wow. so this this was one of my big ones and um that i did and then i did these two littler ones love and, and so um, you just rolled them up and stuck them back in those tubes to bring them yes. home. Yes. Well, Brilliant. actually, okay. So I did so much. I did more. I'll show you. But <laughs> I had these, and then I had all of these. These were my. I was beginning to play with collage. Yes. Yeah. And um, and then so I was doing these. So that's all on the paper I brought, and then. <laughs> And then I did two pieces. Um, oh, these were pieces I started before I left here. Mm -hmm. And um, so I kind of stayed in that direction. And so then I, um, out the window of the, of the studio I was in was this beautiful landscape. And I was like, okay, I want to play with landscape. Mm -hmm. So I got some more canvas. And let's see if I can do this. <laughs> so I got, and they're pretty good size. And yeah. so I wanted to play with the line that, you know, I was kind of playing with in my pieces. And so I started playing with these and they were just the last day that we yeah. could paint before the open studios. And so I just started working and the creative director was like, they're done, they're done. This one I may work more on, yeah. but, um, but, and then I did two that are just, I don't know if you can see it. This one I have to change the lines a little because they don't read enough, but this one you can see. Wow. And I just started playing with, you know, just like these, you know, very simple, minimal mm -hmm. things. Yes. And I did some small ones too. And then a big one went to um, someone that I did. Um, Bonnie asked how long it, uh, the residency was. Two weeks, Bonnie. I two weeks, right? And um, and then, yeah. So, so I did all that. Oh, while I'm at it, okay. Let me show you. I talked about the uh, yeah. the yes. pieces. Oh, you know, from, oh, from the, the ice and water. Yeah. The, like the mm -hmm. yeah, gorgeous. That's my ice. Okay pieces and then you know i have lots more <laughs> lots of art <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, the landscape pieces i love them because they're very simple and fresh but they also they look like you like i see you know what they remind me of it's almost like a negative of uh -huh. your bigger pieces that i'm seeing on the wall if that makes any sense yeah 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 and so i don't know what i did with i have these little pieces that are what do I do with them? I can't find them. Okay, so anyway, I did a bunch of little ones too that like, you know, like uh, 12 by 14, I don't know, nine by 12 or, yeah. you know, that same kind of thing, but small ones. And uh, 
Yeah, so I'm excited to play with both, you know, see where the two yeah. go. You know, the yeah. landscape. Like to go from well very as... simple to your other pieces, which yeah. are almost like puzzles, right? right? And right. there's a sculptural element to them as well. Well, and there is. Different. And talking about sculpture, I don't have my big colored ones in here, but I know you like mentioned that I did, I put paper up so I wouldn't have so much glare in here but here's just a few little sculptures and and then what i do with my sculptures is i do sketches like for my paintings right you know i work out like these sculptural sketches really well, now do you collect things at the beach you must collect all this stuff at the beach too. no this is really? all um is that clay? It's, it's, it's clay yeah okay it's but, all clay but i'm saying like when i mean and, like, i can't like, i can't go to the beach and not pick up the shells oh, and the urchins right, and bring them right. home with me <laughs> right yes yes and so yeah a little bit that but i'm scuba diving right and so so okay so five years ago when i retired and you know i'm not so much i'm not so young anymore but i my boyfriend who was new at the time said i'll pay for um lessons you know and certification if you want to do it well i wasn't even a water person i took swim lessons i mean i could swim but i didn't feel like i was a strong swimmer and i was like oh just like yeah. but i want to make this work because i knew it would be incredibly mm -hmm. inspirational mm -hmm. um and so, oh, I just want to answer. Somebody had mentioned, I don't know if you answered, where was the residency? So I'll repeat again. It was at Chateau Ocuvo, Ocuvo, I think is how I say it, in France. I'll add, and, add it to the show notes and yeah. I'll put a direct link to their Instagram oh. account. So anybody who's interested can click on over and apply today. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, I think it's the timing is right now. But, um, Anyway, so the scuba diving, so I started scuba diving, and now it's five years later. I've gone to incredible places, and I started photographing about a year or so ago. Um, and so that's become a whole other art form. Mm -hmm. And it's really about just documenting for inspiration for my art. Um, but it's amazing. Mm -hmm. yeah. So all of that is inspiration. It's a whole other other world where's your favorite place to die oh, boy. Where, so far so far indonesia ah. uh, why clear waters oh, Super clear my waters. god the coral reef in indonesia is so healthy it's just so <laughs> so healthy and beautiful i'm all about the coral and it being healthy and beautiful yeah. and colorful and the fish so you kind of get it all there and you get little fish and big fish and um it's just stunning yeah mm -hmm. yeah where the caribbean a lot of the coral reef in the caribbean is getting bleached out right yeah. they're trying to they're trying trying to bring it back and they're yeah. doing a good job in some yeah. places yeah. Thinking, ships, thinking wrecks and turning that into yeah um, an area oh yeah. bonnie had a very good art question <laughs> did you okay, see what? that go by <laughs> what you said you still have the same boyfriend <laughs> yeah. yeah 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 we're still diving he wasn't just awesome. an investment you piece. never know you know you Five never know this is kind of amazing yeah. <laughs> good for you <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you That's have another so trip planned or do you have like another diving excursion planned? We do. And it's actually in March and it's to Indonesia again uh, because um, a COVID, so we had a trip, got canceled because of COVID, but we did do one, but it was a different one, like I don't know, nine months ago or so. So we're going to go again because we all loved it so much. Mm -hmm. And so that we're going to a different area. So I'm like, oh, great. Yeah. Amazing. You come <laughs> home with all sorts, of, all sorts of new inspiration again, too, I'm sure, to fuel the next, to fuel the period in the studio before you get to travel again. Yeah. 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 And I try to do art. I try to sketch when I'm, you know, traveling yeah. and, um, you know, and, and do that. But yeah. So 
And the last five years has just been an incredible time for you. It sounds like, like things have just exploded and blossomed and, you know, yeah. you see you seem pretty excited about yeah. where you are in life. Oh, I'm, I feel very fortunate. Uh, but now, so one of the things, and you guys, you two I know are going to relate to this, is figuring out, okay, fine, let, you know, produce all this work, but I do want to sell it. Yeah. I don't yeah. want to just have it stack up in my garage. And so that's my biggest challenge. Yeah. And yeah. having the travel. So mm -hmm. one of the things that, I, I have never done this. One of the things, one of the artists there who's been at the residency, who was very successful, she's on um, three sites, Sachi Art, Singular, Art Finder, and doing fabulous. So she was coaching me. So I'm really going to give it a shot. I'm yeah. going to try that. You know, my whole thing was like, okay, let me get a body of work going and try to find a gallery maybe try to sell online, you know, just, you know, just keep going with what I'm doing and see where it takes me, which of course yeah. is in reality what's going to happen. But um, I am, I am going to try those sites and see. We all have and, to um, read this. I was just going to grab what it. Is that? Right here. Um, so okay. what it's is that? It's called it? The Art of Selling Arts. And this is a friend of Rena's, right? Susan Watson. Washington yeah. is the artist. She's actually coming on in two weeks, the 10th oh. of October, and this book just yeah. launched. It's brand That's new, and it's all about selling work online. So not going the traditional yeah. gallery approach, but the different ways. And it's right. got great strategies and very, very timely and current. So that might be something uh -huh. you cool. grab a copy of and look at, too. Oh, definitely. So, there's yeah. so many of us in the same boat, right? Yeah. Just so many yeah. of us. Well, especially if you're prolific. Right. If you if you're making a lot of art, it piles up pretty mm -hmm. damn fast. Right. And now the residency like encouraged me to make even more than I was doing, like even get more. Pro you know, if I'm really going to do it, I have to get even more productive. Yes. And so and and I learned how to work non stretched. And that's what I'm going to continue to do. Oh, so it, it saves, not... yeah, saves me money. And then you just roll it up and send it. Right. Little ones might be tough, you know, to do that way, you know, for people. But, but the big ones, just you roll it up and do you send, you know, ship it out. Your bars? So, no. so your collector no. have to do, no, get to take care of it. Take it to a framer. So they take it okay. to the framer. Yeah, they take it to the framer. Yeah. And then, you know, you sell it cheaper because of that, mm -hmm. you know, so um, on all levels, you know, the shipping as well as the framing. And, and then I'm not like uh, some of these things behind me are on stretchers, but the ones I did there, they're not. Mm -hmm. And I just have them. I was using um, a staple gun at the mm -hmm. residency, and then I realized, wait a minute, the, um, the the push pins my push my clear push pins work better there you go and, and easier you know, to take out little teeny holes in them yeah so and so now i'm going to debate like i put tape on it you can see behind me so you know that would go around the stretcher yeah. right. but some this one woman who was my my god my mentor there another artist she paints to the edge and then the paint can just go around the edge and people can decide to frame it or not and she right. sent everything just you know in a tube and i shipped everything back and it was pretty heavy all my um i shipped it back and just put the paper in the tube i carried yeah. and oh magnets yeah i don't Maybe I don't know if they're strong enough to hold it. They are, but you have to buy the super duper ones, and then you've got to install magnetic strips on your wall. Yeah. Oh, so that okay. they can stick to them, right? Uh, see, this, this I like because I can just go boop, 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 and put it anywhere. <laughs> yeah. you know? But anyway, um, it cost me sixty-five dollars, no, maybe euros, so maybe eighty dollars to ship a tube that was very heavy. That's home. not bad. That's not bad. bad. That would have been that. That would have been one painting. Yeah. Not even. So that, you don't get it up with customs or no, duty or any of that. So that was it, through the mail. 
It came through the post office. So, you know, that made me realize that was from France. So you can ship all over the world. Right. Yeah. Wow, that's, that's, that's really opening. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, the, you know, those kinds of things came out of this residency. You, you know, like from the people around you. I think that's amazing. Yeah. So, so um, and then some people, you know, they have different approaches. You know, they're doing the fairs and, yeah. you know, different things. And then some aren't even interested in that. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, they're just doing their art for their own pleasure. Mm -hmm. Most people were pretty serious, but not some were young and just beginning, mm -hmm. you know, so, um, you know, I'm working full time and, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. so some will make it and some will get fragmented like me. <laughs> and then come back to it later when they have the time. It's right. never too late. Agreed. That's never a common, too late. Yeah. Common, common theme on this Right. right. Speaking right. of too late, I'm the I, clock watcher. I know. We, don't lose, we do not want to lose this recording because there's so much good stuff in here. Okay, good. good. And we just good. touched the tip of the iceberg. I know. With you, Debbie. Hey. Next time you go to New York, I'll meet you there. I, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I am part of the membership of Visionary Project. Oh, the Visionary Project? Mm -hmm. Oh, right. Mm -hmm. I'm one, part of the founding members. They just, yeah. They just put out a call I, for. They did application uh, i know yeah, i just saw that i didn't realize that very interesting yeah just bonnie yeah, says, i wanted a new can you come back do we come yeah back? yeah let's yes we will have her back bonnie because we didn't get into a lot of stuff okay yeah let's do it it's great it was All fun right. we love two-parters yeah good we do love two-parters <laughs> Because we feel like we already know you by the second second call, so we can yeah. really just go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you great. know where I met Debbie was on Threads. I think it's like the only oh, time I've been on Threads. Good. Me too. I put out the question, who would you recommend? And you said, me, myself. <laughs> <laughs> so that, then totally we started done. the conversation. Love it. That was the yeah. perfect. best aspect of Threads, and now it's kind of a dead thing. I don't even go on they there except by accident. Here. It was just us meeting. It was meant yeah. to be. That's right. right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so right. pleased. I'm so Thank glad. you, Karen, I so love you much too. I love you too. Love love and we'll talk to you soon. That's and I uh, really appreciate you coming on and sharing with us today, Debbie. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I'll talk thank to you so after my next trip. I didn't even tell you where that is. Okay. There Sounds good. good for next time. Okay. okay. <laughs> All right, wait. everybody. Thanks for okay, being bye. here. Thanks for your questions. And uh, we will see you guys next week with your books read or at least ready to talk about a book that you haven't read. <laughs> I read it because of you. Awesome. Good. <laughs> All right. All right. Yeah. Take care. Have a great, Have a great, great week. Bye, bye everybody. Bye. bye.